I'm Bill Lee, a test pilot with the Boeing Company. I'm here today to tell you about the AH-6I, one of the many aircraft that the Boeing Company produces for customers around the world. The H-6I is uh, very unique. It's a commercial uh, helicopter, but this is a military version of that commercial variant. The H-6I is unique in the fact that we take a technology borrowed from the AH-64E, i.e. the mission computer, and we're able to port that technology into a much smaller package, and more importantly, a much more economical package for our international customers. So we take the avionics, the systems integration, the weapons integration, uh, flight page, common uh, digital map, and we are able to let the aircraft use this in the aircraft via our glass cockpit. The avionics are housed in the nose, so it makes for a much smaller package than what we have on the AH-64. You also see a sensor under the nose. This is the uh, MX-15 sensor. It is a day color TV, uh, electro-optic narrow for targeting, and it also has FLIR and a blended FLIR and color TV for targeting applications. The sensor also has a laser designator, which we use for laser-guided weapons such as the Hellfire missile. Another designated weapon is the laser-guided rocket that we use on this aircraft. The aircraft has conventional weapons, the 7.62 miniguns that you see on the inboard stores, the 2.75 inch folding fin aerial rocket that you see on the outboard store. Now the rockets are also the version that we have a laser designated variant of. Another machine gun that can be used on the aircraft is the GAL 1950 caliber weapon. So inside the cockpit, let me show you a little bit about that. What's unique about the cockpit, as you can see, it's a glass cockpit and we have touch screens. This allows the air crew to bring up various um, information like your flight page, the navigation page with maps, has your engine information. The display up top is what we call the upfront display. It provides warnings, cautions, and advisories to the flight crew. We also have a standby flight display in the event of a total electric failure, an to unlikely event of total electric failure, that allows the crew to fly the aircraft via that display. Uh, what's also unique about this aircraft is we try to integrate these systems, particularly the weapons and the sensors, so that all of those systems are they're able to operate them by using the cyclic and the collective. So I can, I can arm a system, I can select a specific weapon system, I can select functions on the map without ever taking my hands off of the control. The aircraft also has the capability to send and receive video from other types of aircraft, i.e. specifically a UAV. So I can send video to a, uh, a ground station of what I may be looking at. I can also receive video from that ground station. I could also receive video from uh, most types of UAV aircraft out there. The aircraft is currently if configured in an attack configuration, so this is what we call the weapons plank, and it will hold the various configurations of weapons. As we talked about earlier, you have a Hellfire launcher, you have 7.62 machine guns on the inboard, and we have a rocket launcher on the outside. Again, we can change the different weapons types depending on the mission configuration. Uh, this would be an example of the ammo can, so you can load 3,000 rounds in each of these cans, so for a total of 6,000 rounds available for both of these miniguns and that fires at a rate of about 3,000 rounds a minute. What you see in the back, this is an additional uh, fuel tank that allows us to fly uh, longer ranges and have greater endurance for the different types of missions that we could cover. Another configuration is you can completely remove this plank, the weapons plank, and reconfigure it with what we call the um, mission assault plank. And basically it has two shelves that sit out here that you could put troops on the outside so you could have snipers, you could have, uh, you could do actually do pair drop uh, operations from the aircraft. With the people riding on the outboard you can do what we call a, an assault mission so I would have up to three people on each plank with the pilots on board. I could even put some on the inside. And let's say I'm going to insert those troops into a, onto a rooftop. So I have the troops on the out, outboard and I would fly the aircraft, land to the rooftop, the troops would get off and then we would fly the aircraft away and maybe or maybe uh, pick them up again. 
Another great capability of the AH-6I is its performance characteristics. The aircraft is, has a maximum gross weight for takeoff of 4,700 pounds, and it sits here empty about 25, 2,700 pounds, so the aircraft can literally lift its own weight in payload. So that gives you the capability to carry a lot of munitions, uh, troops if you have the planks on, and so on. Uh, other, another great thing is being able to operate at high altitudes. So for example, you could be at a pressure altitude of about eight to 9,000 feet with a temperature of about 25 degrees Celsius and the aircraft can still hover out of ground effect with that full mission load. You're never really going to be at 4,700 pounds. A typical weight and probably the most you would ever weigh in any mission configuration is about 43, 4,400 pounds. So it has a great performance capability, uh, long range when you need it and it can uh, go and get the job done whenever capable. Okay, so the last mission that we want to talk about that the H-6I is capable of is the reconnaissance mission. And what we do on the reconnaissance is we would actually remove the weapons plank or the special mission operations plank and leave it empty in the back with the exception of the fuel tank. We could actually add additional fuel so that we could stay in the air longer. This allows us to be in a reconnaissance role and this we can go out and gather intelligence information with the sensor primarily. We can find targets, we can take that data and we can bring it back and either transmit it down via the tactical uh, common data link, the video, so I can share that video real time on the ground with the ground station. I could also be receiving UAV video again and transmit, retransmitting that to someone on the ground. I could catalog all of my targets. I can actually take pictures of that uh, within the aircraft via screen captures and I can share that information either, either with a ground commander or also share that with say the Apache helicopter. So in that sense you can kind of uh, use the two together in a team, what we call a scout attack team. We can't currently transmit the data directly between the aircraft but that certainly is a capability uh, that the Apache has in being able to send, send and receive. We don't currently have the capability on this particular aircraft.